Okay. Is it back? So I can show you here what that was. So where's OBS? OBS? Where art thou? Alright, so here it is. Uh, basically, what, what happened there was, um, I know it's all blurry, but you know, you'll get the idea. This little section here, and if we scroll down, you can see the signal to noise ratio, and we drop loss signal for quite a while. And it was two things. One, um, w one is that it lost um, signal, and the other was, one is that it was uh, obstructed. I've got one tree that tends to cause about two minutes of um, um, loss signal throughout a 12-hour period. But usually it's actually very small. That ended up being a, a decent chunk. And the ground had But I can stream on Starlink. I mean, it <laughs> doesn't make sense, does it? Because Starlink is satellites. Um, but yeah, like uh, HughesNet or stuff like that that people use around here? No. That would just, that would be awful. You couldn't use that. Oh, the difference between Starlink and other satellites. Oh, that's a great question. It's the altitude of the satellites. So Starlink is at about 550 kilometers up altitude. And I forget, what is geostationary orbit? Um, that is much, much higher. So yeah, so 550 versus 35,000. It's a lot further for light to go. Um, geostationary stuff, see, I, I can get like a 30 second or lower than 30 second ping right now. Geostationary orbit, when I did have that sort of uh, thing, it was at least half a second, usually more because the hardware sucked. Um, so, Starlink is actually sitting inside of atmosphere, and which is why they typically want satellites higher than that, because Starlink has to put propellant into their satellites so they can keep they can keep themselves moving. There's a little bit of drag in the atmosphere there. So, if a Starlink satellite just went totally like bricked itself whatever reason right in four years the drag would slow it to the point where it would fall to earth and burn up in the thicker atmosphere four or five years i forget which one it is and here is a this is where all of these Starlink satellites are at the moment. Oh, I'm not going to be using... So, original ribbon, good question. Cat5 can't handle the power that is transferred to the client dish, right? Correct. So, I am not going to be using Cat5 to power the dish. I'm going to be using it for connecting the buildings. Um, and I'd probably get some something that's a little bit more beefy than just regular cat five because I'm gonna bury it in conduit and I don't I don't want to deal with it again. 
Um, so we're, we're over here, and you can see all of these satellites. And if you scroll in far enough, you can see how quickly they're moving. They're moving at about seven kilometers per second. So, yeah, and going back to the Cat5 thing, I'm going to dig a trench, toss conduit in it. I might upgrade the power to that building at the same time. It might actually be running. I think that building only has 50 amps. Um, where I'm going to put the dish, because I'm going to put it up higher on this other building. So... But yeah, look at look at how fast those go. Boom, boom, boom. Can't imagine moving that fast. Seven kilometers per second. It's just insane. All right, back to work. Oh, only auto trades can be used in addition. So we can say where container is native class, and then we only have one. Oh, what was that saying? Oh, that that's not even running. Okay. The value of the associated type base. Oh, it must be specified. Base is going to be equal to node. Oh, and user data. Oh, that's great. Okay, so this one's a little too buggy for me. More bluesy, that's good. Interesting that we have to specify the native class. Because what were what were we doing before there? Can I go back a ways? Yeah, it was it was actually something that was specified. So layout. I don't know if I can do it this way. We could toss those in an enum. It's an enum of this type, or that type, or the other type. That would work. kind of defeats the purpose of having this trait. So now it's actually gotten pretty stable. There. This on the right side here. Much more stable now. So.
All right. What's a different way that we could return different types of things? Given that our constraint here on instance is we will get something. Okay. We have to claim it to return this. And before we were giving a concrete type, that's not going to work here. Associated type base. Okay, yeah, we don't even need to read that. Um, I think we need to use an enum here. Containers. Let's say we have screen, vbox. Then each one of these Each one of these will have an instance to whatever their type is. Shared, of course. option to a containers and then in this case this would be a screen so it would say container screen wrap that up in that and we do the same thing with a v box Now that we have an enum, we can actually enforce some more, some more stuff here. Actually, we could use this in a macro, couldn't we? All right, I'm just thinking of maintenance. That'd be fun to play with, but I don't want to do that right now. Okay, so that would work. We just get the container. Container, does it really need to implement this? That would be nice. But it doesn't have to. In fact, yeah. If we had another function here, child constraint, and this was not implemented for us, but we could pass child into this, and this would return a constraint child constraints then we get it add some implementations for this add child and remove child pieces
All right. Child constraints. Does it need to be a mutable self? No. That'll return something that implements an iterator. Should be a C there. Okay. This one's too too slow. Let's see, and we, we can't, hmm, we're walking into gaps, aren't we? Well, let's just say this is, it could be a vector of constraints. What I'm thinking here is that I, I want to implement these, but have the container actually implement just the child constraints. The other problem here is that add child and remove child are going to need something specific off of self. So we need to also have some other thing on this, which would be like function like get layout. All right. As I mentioned before, I'm a little partial to um, saxophone pieces. Just imagine, five, fifth grade, let's say I was in fifth grade when I started to learn how to play saxophone, making that horrible goose sound. Honk, honk, honk. <laughs> that was so bad. Parents have to be so patient. I, I want that to be so generic. I just All right, let, let's change this to props. And in this case, this will be a reference to a hash map of prop and value variable. Okay. And this is just, it's not going to be, it doesn't even have to be on self. It could be on self. Okay. That this is going to be a vector of constraints. Right in the bullet. 
Giving that a hard type there. Okay. So these they implement. These will implement. I mean, this one's going to be pretty straightforward for either one of those. So if we come back to VBox, we also have, like when the tree is entered, right? We figure out how to get um, the layout object. Same for on exiting. Basically take that and unregister ourselves. Uh, let's go into screen. Is on child added, etc. Okay. Implement missing members. Thank you. I want to remove those. Well, there's self dot layout there. I think we, we could actually implement that, couldn't we? Okay, this is Would we ever want that? Probably not. Only if I was being really, really lazy. Okay, back to screen. Um, there's a couple things that we have to do. So when we enter the tree, we need to get a layout. On tree entered, mutable self, thank you. And we will say, let's say, layout will equal to super get layout. That'll return an option, I believe. Yeah, option to the instance, etc. Right, sorry, I got a, got a message.
I think we have a new goat. Okay, yeah, yeah, new goat. We knew she was going to pop any day now. Sorry. Farm life, you know? Coding, managing goats. Wow. Um, layout will be an optional layout. Okay, back to where we were. No, no, none. Okay, we'll just use that later. <laughs> it's nice when a plan comes together. Wait, type T layout. That oh that that's a it doesn't know what type that is. I'll just from this here. It's gonna be a super layout. <laughs> Can you say that without a cigar? Is that allowed? Ah, uh, ribbon. Uh, let me see if I can get the... Uh... It's not the best picture. Let me see. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's it doing? Just trying to save the photo for a moment. There we go. Well, there's the mama goat. And there's a top view of a baby goat. It is really hard to see, I know. Baby goat. In all its blurriness. And it's aww. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Back to work with you, to the mines. Let me find my screen again. There we go. A cute, blurry baby, yes. 
It's fine again after the cold shock. Oh, that 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 was a different one. That was not that baby. We've had nearly ten goats kitted. Or no, seven. So nearly ten. Uh, if we're rounding up and being generous. Oh, you know what? Didn't want to do that. I want to say dot Quebec Godot. Okay. Then on tree exited, we don't really have to do anything for that, but we could just take that in case we have to enter again. Mismatched types. Oh, that's right. Really is an instance to a layout, isn't it? All right. Yeah, we actually have too many goats at the moment. So. Got to tend to that. Anybody want to buy a goat? <laughs> All right, what's this yelling about? Now this should be an instance to a layout. Maybe a reference to an instance? No, instance is a ref type. In place, maybe in place. Does it have... What traits does it implement? I'll close that. There's a ref instance. What about instance? So yeah, it's clone. Or we just return a reference to it. Let's see if we can get away with a reference. Let's go to UI mod and change that trait. Okay, now back to where we were. Okay, that one should work. The rest are to-dos. Come on, I said should work. What's an option? Ah. That's rough. You know, at this point, I think we more or less expect this to be
we want to do an as ref first. Then we can pull that inner type out of there. It'll be borrowed at that point. All right, that should work. Third time's a charm, or fourth or fifth time, whatever we're at. Okay. Child constraints we'll get to in a bit. Add child and remove child, though. On this, we can implement kind of above. I'm going to yank some code out of this. As we are going to basically do this. UI mod, we're going to implement add child here, provide a default implementation. Oops, I lost my capture. There we go. Now a ref instance, we will map mutable over, over that. Now, once we have reference to the class itself, to, to that instance, now at this point, we can get the constraints using the child constraints and also getting the props off the child. Let's get those first. Props. Child, I get props. Ta-da, now we have props. We will pass those props in. Now we have the constraints. And we can register all of those. With layout. OK, just thinking through that. Sorry, I get these big gaps in my speech speaking whenever I do this. Um, for constraint in, let's, say, let's call it C. For C in constraints. Layout dot add constraint I mean why don't we just do add constraints pass those through we'll have to add that on layout that should work. Bear Duda, good morning, fine sir. Good morning. We got your entry music. You need the rest of the world to hurry up on daylight savings time so you're not so off. <laughs> uh, don't worry. They'll catch up in time. <laughs> that was bad. I'm sorry. That was, just, that was a bad pun. That was a bad pun. All right, we're, we're going to do some puns real quick. All right. Why did the stadium get hot? All the fans left. Da -da
Gonna pour some tea. Tea time. All right. Next. What's next? Add constraints. Dun, dun, dun. Let's add that to layout. So add constraints on solver, take something that it's an into iterator. We do the same thing. Oh, it needs a lifetime as well. Should be a plural, adding constraints. That looks okay. Let's go back. You in Arizona, man? It's the only place I can think of that, that does stuff like that. Nah, you don't have to tell us where you are. It's going to follow up and say like, hey, I got family out there. Do you, do you know my, my brother? <laughs> yeah, little Johnny. What are we missing there? Am I supposed to take that to script? Uh, script. Should get. It's a user data type. But I thought. I I didn't think that we had to do that here. What are we doing? Vbox. Yeah, it's just script. You call the function. Hmm. Oh, it's called script and not layout. Duh. And script happens to be a layout. I don't like that. Most of you use on CST or CTCST. Uh, Oh, it wants a reference to a constraint. Oh, interesting.
Okay, that there should work. Now we've add child, let's do the remove child, which is basically the reverse of that. Let's say remove constraints, it's basically the exact same thing. So they didn't, did they have that on Cassowary? Remove constraint was singular, wasn't it? So you could add a bunch, but you have to remove them one at a time. I wonder why that is. Why isn't there symmetry there? Does that bug anybody else? Is there something about remove constraint? No. Oh, what was bugging me? <laughs> okay, so in this in this API here, we have add constraints, plural, right? Add constraint and remove constraint, so singular. But there is no remove constraints, plural. They have this one for easy adding, but not for easy removing of bulk. I don't know why. Don't know why. We'll add it. We'll add it in hours. Add constraint, edit constraints. Remove constraint, remove constraints. Hmm. And we could have just called this function here, which we will do. Self dot remove constraint. <laughs> you can comfortably say yes, the bugs you do. You know what's actually faster is to do it the other way. Constraints dot for each. I, you know, they, they should both be about the same same speed, shouldn't they? I thought that... I thought in one case, it was doing fewer bounds checks, but I don't remember. I think in this case, it does fewer bounds checks, but don't... 
double check me on that. Is that a, I don't remember. All right. So there's that. Now VBox can impl this. No, no, not VBox. Screen can impl this without having to put those on there. What's that? Now it just needs to. We just need some way of providing these uh, child constraints. So the child is going to be calling this function on the container. Right? But we don't have a way to, let's say, store the constraints for a given child. And I know I said I was going to be flip-flopping on this. And part of that right now is because I'm not sure how this is implemented. All right, this is probably going to be for partially Q here. Oh, it's const pointer. So this, this is identity equality. Is it exactly the same one? So to remove a constraint, we have to provide it with the exact same one. We can't just build it again. Okay. So when we create these constraints, we have to be able to then look them back up and provide them later. So child constraints must return the exact same ones as before for the given child. How do I identify a child then? This is getting a little messy. And wh why does it want Expected one type parameter. Oh, that's in the other location where we are implementing it. Yeah, it was just pointing to the other location. Got it. Got it. Got it. Say, hey, this get props thing is also So this hash for constraint. All right, let's go back. Let's go look at the GD native bits. I don't like this one. Uh, 
I like this one. Those roughs are cheap. So we could pass in I thought this was the uh, the older guy that was singing, was it yesterday, that had that really kind of gravelly, whispery voice, but it's not. Why don't we just pass the props in and it'll be the hash map. So I'm going to get rid of that. Just pass a reference in for that. So a child in this case. Yeah. We add this child, yada, yada. This will be a ref to some kind and that kind is going to be probably a node ref node will be shared and then the props oh look at that and then when we remove the child we only need the ref node We have to do the same thing here. We have to pass the props with the child. Trying to think about this API, because when we get a child, right, this is the difference between the add child and the, and the remove child. When we add a child, we have to pass in the reference to the child and its properties. When we remove a child, we should not have to pass the properties in. When that happens, we end up with this child constraints. Child constraints here is going to be building out the constraints and storing them somewhere, somehow. Now. We don't need to know what the implementation is for that, just that it happens. So maybe we have like an add child constraints and that returns a vector of constraints. And then we also have a function remove child constraints. And that would return the vector of constraints. Remember, it was the Daddies. All right, so if we do that, 
and we have the child, we have the props. child and props. We'll get the constraints back. Okay, that would work. Then here, when we remove child, remove child constraints. We want the child passed in. We get the constraints back. Now in this case, we remove the constraints. Hmm. Is that the right type? Because iter will provide an iterator that has references to the elements. There we go. OK, so that should work through. Let's build that out on. OK, so we'll basically have boiler, boilerplate to support add and remove child constraints for each one of those and get layout, getting and setting the layout. I don't plan on having too many container types, so it's probably not that bad. Oops, wrong way. We want to go to screen. And the container for screen is missing some. Hmm. <laughs> Took it a moment. I'm guessing that you are muted. We've got music. Oh, just this tab went quiet. I'm going to check mine. Testing, 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 testing. It was you? Because I, I don't hear it either. I wonder if... Because I, I don't hear myself either. Let me see, is OBS hearing me? Testing, yes it is. Reload the page. I wonder if that happened to everyone. I did notice a bunch of people dropped off. Testing, testing. Okay. Gonna be right back.